Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is the series' first debut on next-generation consoles and is packing a number of features really only possible on such platforms. In this video brought to you by Digital Foundry and Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, I will take a dive into this paranoid and polarized 1980 settings in this game to highlight how the next generation heightens realism and the fidelity, all while offering more options for those who crave the best response and fluidity on consoles. So let's jump in and dust off. Call of Duty series has generally made some impressive feats this last generation at 60 FPS, and the extra power and speed of the next generation of consoles has enabled them to push even further. To my eye, the biggest visual enhancement in Call of Duty Cold War is found in its ray tracing. Cold War utilizes hardware ray tracing acceleration found in next generation consoles like the PlayStation 5 to render the game's shadows. I really think the best way to emphasize how this adds to the visuals is to compare with the last generation version of the game and its presentation as found on PlayStation 4 Pro. Raytrace Shadows essentially solve many issues found in last generation games that were really common. So like in Cold War on PlayStation 4 Pro, the game shadows are done with shadow maps, which are sort of like a real-time texture being drawn for shadows with a limited resolution. Since PlayStation 4 Pro was targeting 60 FPS, that meant there were compromises of course, like in resolution of these shadows. So it's pretty easy to see blocky shadows on such a platform. Like here, look at our character shadows on PlayStation 4 Pro. Notice how the character's shadow is soft to a degree, but has really obvious blocks in it that move around and show the pixel edges. It's unstable, and it doesn't look how a shadow would look like in real life. Turning up the resolution of these shadows could help, but then the shadows would be uniformly sharp. Ray Trace Shadows on PlayStation 5 solve this elegantly in two ways. Firstly, Ray Trace Shadows the way Call of Duty does it does not have visible pixel edges. It will always draw as much detail as the screen resolution allows, so the shadow no longer has those obvious dancing pixel edges as the character animates. But it's also not uniformly sharp like a standard shadow map would be. The character shadow is sharp here, yet the shadow of the cross beams above and behind the character are softer because they're further away. This realistic difference in sharpness and shadows is something that ray tracing does elegantly by its very nature. Basically, ray tracing allows for the size and proximity of a light source to affect how sharp the shadow is. You can see this difference here when looking down at my character shadow in front of this light. With the standard shadow maps on PlayStation 4 Pro, the shadow is hard lined, but at the same time low resolution, so it's really edgy and it moves a little weirdly. On PlayStation 5 with ray trace shadows, the character shadow starts off sharp and then becomes more soft and diffused the further away from the location where it started. This is a key effect in this game on PlayStation 5 as a lot of the gameplay takes place in shadowy areas as you sneak around in various missions of the game doing all sorts of subterfuge. PlayStation 4 Pro in these scenes can look decidedly more video gamey, where shadows are low res and blocky and very disconnected from the original caster. Another key upgrade brought about by ray trace shadows is that they inherently draw as much detail no matter how close you get to an object. On PlayStation 4 Pro with the standard shadow maps, their lower internal resolution on top of other factors means that smaller objects and little bits of the game world lack shadows. So if you get up to an object like this box here, for example, you can see that it looks oddly flat and low contrast. The material on it also looks a bit strange as there's no shadows to be found. With the ray tracing on PlayStation 5, all of the little bits on the box itself are now casting shadows and you can see how that has a great effect on the material of the box, where it doesn't look flat like it does on the Pro. To me, this aspect of ray trace shadows is key in a game like Black Ops Cold War, as the environment and props team behind this game have really added in tons of small detail into this game world. And you can see that across so many different sections of the campaign, just walking around and looking at all the little bits found in the environment. You go up to a surface of an object and there's tons of beautifully modeled surface detail with little bits and bolts and doodads. On PlayStation 4 Pro, the shadow maps not being able to capture shadows for such small details makes the entire model look flat and the material of that model look flat as well. 
Raytrace Shadows on PlayStation 5 emphasized the true detail found on the models that was actually there the whole time, you just couldn't really see it. And it's really often surprising how much more detail can be packed into these scenes as a result. Like here from the campaign, where ray tracing makes sure that every little detail on this whiteboard here has pixel perfect shadows, down to the tiny little thumbtacks and small wires holding this thing together. And all these shadows are showcasing realistic differences in sharpness. PlayStation 4 Pro, on the other hand, looks so much flatter in comparison. Even beyond adding detail, ray traced shadows do even more as a result of other aspects inherent in how they function. Have you ever noticed how objects are floating away from their shadows in a game? Well, that is a problem that shadow maps have. Ray trace shadows like those found on PlayStation 5 here cast from the point where they should no matter what. So in a scene like this, you can not have odd floating objects on the table where you can see light leaking through areas where there should actually be shadows. Have you also ever noticed how in games you can see the shadow map resolution change the closer you get to an object? Well, like you can see here on PS4 Pro, shadow maps use different cascades of lower resolution the further in the distance to save performance. So shadows change resolution in right in front of you. Compare that exact same scene with ray tray shadows on PS5, and RT shadows no longer have that concept of resolution really, so no matter how far away you are from them, you always get that pixel perfect shadow. And it won't be changing its quality the closer you get. But for me, one of my favorite aspects of ray tray shadows in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War on PlayStation 5 is the extra shadows it can add. Now, not to simplify this game at all, but I think Call of Duty is about guns. You shooting them, other people shooting them at you, getting shot, it is the bread and butter of these games, and part of that experience is having guns look great and feel great to shoot, which is why you get really nice reload animations in this game. And it's also why the developers purposefully add per object motion blur to the guns and hands in this game, but no other objects. They essentially want the guns to look and animate great as they recoil and move. But on PlayStation 5, there's another enhancement with ray traced muzzle flash shadows. Basically, when a gun fires, that flash from it produces a light, and on PlayStation 5, these cast ray trace shadows. Whether the gun is firing in your own hands, like me firing this RPD here and seeing the flashes of shadows on the wall, or it happens when you watch other characters fire their weapons as well. When it happens, you get this really cool dance of light and shadow that is missing on PlayStation 4 Pro. And instead there, the light not casting shadow is leaking through objects. I'm always really happy to see this effect in first person shooters, as it really adds to the experience. And the way ray tracing works, it's an accurate and performant way to do this in comparison to shadow maps. Now, I've been talking a lot about ray tracing here, but that is of course not the only next gen graphical difference. But the rest have been rather obvious, I think, in their own right if you've been watching this video and looking at the side-by-sides. Resolution on PlayStation 5, for example, is massively enhanced, and scaling is done differently. So, if you compare in side-by-sides like here, you can see how much clearer the image is on PlayStation 5, showcasing the game's detailed world in a much clearer fashion. On top of this, post-processing is no longer affected by the game's res scaling in the same way like it was on Pro. So the depth of field is no longer flickery, and it no longer looks de-resed in a lot of scenes. The game's bloom and flares also no longer squish horizontally like they do on PlayStation 4 Pro, which you can really see around this light here. On top of this, you also get much higher resolution textures on key areas, like the player hand models, as you can see in the opening cutscene on the thumb here, or around the environment of the entire game on basically anything. Geometry rendering is also pushed out much further on PlayStation 5, so there are more objects in the distance and they are of higher quality. Behind the scenes you're also getting a decidedly snappier game experience, as loading is greatly reduced. For example, while going between missions, there are transition cutscenes, after which the game loads the next level. As this is happening for one mission, I recorded the PlayStation 5 taking a little more than 16 seconds for this transition. On PlayStation 4 Pro, this took a full 40 seconds, so less than half the time on PlayStation 5, which is a nice upgrade, but it's even better in multiplayer, where the difference is greater. With PlayStation 5, loading a map to get to the kit selection screen took a little over 2 seconds. On PlayStation 4 Pro, this took more than 25 seconds to do the exact same thing. 
which is really an amazing difference in favor of the next-gen platform. But the differences don't stop there, and the last really big one is a 120 FPS mode. This is something that really needs to be seen to be believed, and I can unfortunately only communicate it here on this video on YouTube by slowing down the footage by 50%, and hopefully that can communicate the level of smoothness that this mode provides. By turning off ray tracing and having the performance mode set in the PlayStation 5's menu, the game starts running at a 120Hz mode, and it has a dramatically transformative effect on the smoothness of this game's visuals. A game like Call of Duty with its movement and mayhem really benefits from the extra feedback and controls and visual acuity that this mode offers, and it's something not at all possible on PlayStation 4 Pro of course. And I think the best way to experience it is to load up multiplayer, crank up the FOV, and plug in a mouse and keyboard just like I did here in this footage. At this point, it feels like you're playing a different game altogether given the way it responds to your input. And I felt right at home like I would on PC for example, scoring kills with a mouse where I usually would struggle in such a game like this at 60Hz with a controller. Going over it all in the end here, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is offering some seriously transformative next-gen tech with better graphics performance and just a generally better experience with those loading enhancements. And I really look forward to seeing how this series evolves over the gen given this feature-rich start. And until then, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did enjoy it, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, then consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to help us out, support Digital Foundry on Patreon to get years worth of Digital Foundry content available in high quality for download. If you want to talk to me about 120 FPS or Ray Trace Shadows and the like, write a comment below or follow me in Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen. understand the situation. Ah! Make it.